Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good to see you, good to see you see me. It's your girl, Cal, here, your inspirational speaker and teacher on this Saturday evening. It is November 7th, and it is about 8.26 p.m. Central Standard Time. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to give a few minutes for people to log in to see that this is going on live right now. Once we are going, we are going. Owen. So let people know that it's um, happening live now. Please make sure you share the message if you're here with me live tonight. Make sure you hit the share button, uh, the watch party button, the um, what else? What else is out there for you to let people know? Uh, tagging people, you know, do all of those wonderful things here on Facebook that it allows for us to do to share this message on this Saturday evening, this exhortation, this encouraging word to help get us through, help continue to get us through. Hey, everybody, as you're coming on, I'm saying, hey, 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 now, hey, hey. Because once we get started, we getting started now. I can't be greeting everybody as you come along. All right, so let people know that it's happening now. And we'll give people a few minutes, just a couple, uh, to join in right now live. I know, I know there's a lot going on tonight. I know there's a lot going on tonight. I said, look, I'm going to have about one person watching tonight. <laughs> Just one based off of all of the action that's happening uh, right now as I speak, so to speak. Uh, so, yeah, prayerfully, I might get a lot more replays than I have lives on tonight. But that's all right. That's all right. God is still sovereign. God is still in control and the message will still go forth. Hey there, Regina. Appreciate you. Hope you had a good day today. Hope everything is well with you and your family. Make sure you share the message too. <laughs> Appreciate you. All right. Giving people some time to get on. Getting, giving some time for people to join in. Got about 30 more seconds and then we are going to get started on tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Replays are good. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with the replays. That's for sure. Uh, sometimes you got to you gotta hear a message more than once. Even if you were here live, sometimes replaying it is good for, for reinforcement or for reminding. Or you might have missed something the first time around and you got to hear it again. You're like, oh man, I missed that point the first time. <laughs> the replays are good. I appreciate that. Definitely. Definitely appreciate that. All right, y'all. So we are going to go ahead and get started. And the theme, the title of this message is God's purpose, not our own. It's God's purpose, not our own. Uh, we have to be mindful to understand that, yeah, we have wills, we have um, things that we desire, but we also have to understand that God's purpose is a purpose that will prevail. And we have to settle in with that, <laughs> get comfortable with that, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, knowing that uh, a lot of times our purpose, prayerfully, prayerfully they line up with God's, but sometimes they don't. And we have to understand that we have to prioritize God's purposes over our own. So it's God's purpose, not our own. So the scripture of reference, our thematic scripture for this exhortation comes straight from Genesis. Yeah, the book of beginnings, where it all began, where it all starts. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This is the scripture that I want us to take hold of, take note of, and get this down in our spirit. This is a good, uh, you know, the church that I used to go to um, when they taught the children, call it the memory verse. This would be a very good memory verse for us to, to take hold of because it's very relevant. It was very relevant then. And it's very relevant in our lives right now. Genesis 50, 20 says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And um, we're going to get into this and you, it's going to make a little bit more sense later as we dig in regarding the, this message about God's purpose and not our own. But I mean, I think we can can get a lot from just what we understand of the scripture even right now before we get the context around it. You intended to harm me. 
So you can imagine speaking to um, an enemy in that regard. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. You know, a lot of times we don't see when we're going through, when we're being attacked, when we're going through a trial, when we're being challenged some type of way. A lot of times we don't see the purpose of it as we're going through. We don't understand what's going on while we're in it, what we're going through. Most times it's in retrospect. Most times it's hindsight. That's 2020 that we can turn around and say, ah, I see what God was doing there. Now I understand why I had to go through that to get to where I am right now. Now I understand why God used that situation, that scenario and, and, and what I thought then was in such a negative way. Um, but yet now I see that it was it was for my good. Now I see it was for the positive. Now I see. So a lot of times we have to uh, uh, turn around and see. <laughs> yeah, we got to turn around and see. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it makes sense. And so sticking in the book of Genesis, I want to use an example of Joseph and, and talk a little bit about his story and how it can parallel uh, par parallel our own stories and how God's purposes prevails and not ours. And how, again, we have to get an understanding about that thing. Uh, well, you, you ain't got to get an understanding, but it would be nice if you had one <laughs> that God's purposes will prevail. So starting in Genesis chapter 37, a little bit about Joseph's story. Now, Joseph was, um, at the start of this, a young boy. He was a teenage boy. But God gifted him with dreams. He gifted him with dreams and the ability to be able to interpret these dreams. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 37, <laughs> Joseph had some dreams. He had some dreams. And he shared those dreams with his family. So with his brothers and, 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 and with his dad who is Jacob, and he shared those dreams, and those dreams did not sit well with the family. But again, these were gifts that God had given, that had Joseph had been blessed with to be able to have these dreams and be able to interpret these dreams, although the dreams themselves did not sit well with the family. The dreams kind of showed Joseph taking over, and he was like one of the younger of the children. And so it, it, the dream, in, in a nutshell, uh, it, it, it insinuated to them that what you won't be taking over. What we going to be bowing down to you. What, what's going on? What's up with that? Without getting into all the details about the dream. So at that point, the brothers were like, yeah, okay, little boy, little boy, we ain't doing that for you, whatever. So they were, they had began to start to despise Joseph a little bit. They was a little bit jealous of, of what his dreams meant and, and, and his interpretation of those dreams. So they were a little bit angry with him and they were a little bit uh, uh, um, jealous regarding to his gift. Okay. So now let, let me, let me tell you this, even though we're gifted, okay, just like Joseph, even though we may be gifted, it does not exempt us from opposition. God may gift each and every one of us, which he has, not may. God has gifted each and every one of us with something particular. And just because we're gifted, we're called, God wants to use us, does not mean that we will be exempt from any type of pain, that we will be exempt from any type of opposition, that we will be exempt from any type of attack. As a matter of fact, it's more likely that we will experience all those things so that God can use us all the more. So don't be discouraged in your gifting when you think, man, look, God, I'm singing for you. I'm, I'm worshiping for you. I'm leading these ministries for you. Yet I keep going through trials and tribulations. What's up with that? Why? What, what's up with that? All for his purpose, y'all. We, like I said in the beginning, we may not understand or see what it is at the time we're going through, but let some time elapse. Yeah. The, the, the years teach much. The days never know. Let, let some time elapse and you'll find out what God was doing in your life in that season. So just like Joseph being gifted, having these gift of dreams and interpretations, he, he ran up on some opposition. His, his family, his brothers began to hate on him because of what he said and, and, and what his dreams meant. So later, after these dreams were, were, were shared with the family, there was a plot against Joseph. The enemy began to plot against Joseph and the enemy just so happened to use 
his own brothers <laughs> to, to, to capitalize on this plot. He used his brothers, Joseph's own brothers, for this plot. Scripture says, same chapter, 37, verse 20 says this, and, and, and um, this are, these are the brothers talking. So they saw Joseph coming from afar. Uh, Dad, J uh, Jacob had sent Joseph to go find his brothers. They saw him coming. They said, you know, among other things, but this is the scripture verse, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Yikes. Wow. So this is his own brothers, y'all. Flesh and blood. Plotting to kill him due to the gifting that God had given him. So now the brothers want to kill him. And, 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 and they were very creative and very, you know, they like, okay, let's, let's do it this way and pretend that this happened. But this is really what happened. You know, they were being really meticulous about how they were going to plot to kill their brother. How they were going to plot to kill their brother. So again, because of his gifting. It didn't exempt him from the anger of other people against you. That, that you know, it, didn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't exempt us from any of that. It, it doesn't exempt him. It, didn't, it doesn't exempt us from the hate that we may experience in this life. It doesn't exempt us from the jealousy that we may experience in this life. It will still happen. But again, it all goes back to God's purpose. Again, which we may not see while we're going through. But we will see in the end. A continuation of Genesis chapter 37, when we move down to verses 26 through 27. As they were plotting to kill Joseph, you know, they began to think about it a little bit further. They're like, well, uh, well maybe not. Maybe let's not do that. And, and, and one of the other brothers had an other suggestion. He says, Judah said to his brothers, again, this is in verses 26 and 27. What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And though his brothers agreed to that. My goodness. So rather than kill him, the brothers decided... Well, we're going to sell him. We're going to make some money off of him. But we're going to sell him into slavery. We're going to sell him to the Ishmaelites and sell him into slavery. So rather than kill him and have him suffer by death, we're going to have him suffer by being a slave. And then we still get some benefit from it because we're going to get some money by selling him. So they came up with a greater plan. Yet the idea was still to harm Joseph. That's the bottom line. They wanted Joseph to be harmed. But... They were going to get a little profit, a little gain from his harm as well. And so that's what they decided to do. And at the same time, go back and tell dad a different story as to what happened to little old Joseph. So that's what they did. They sold Joseph into slavery. And, you know, in their minds, the brothers' minds, this was going to be an awful experience for Joseph. <laughs> Now, he, Joseph, who he think he is? He think he going to be ruler over us? He think he going to take over us with these little stupid dreams he's having? Yeah, we'll show him. We going to sell him into slavery. And let's see what his life is like then. Let's see who he's going to be in rule of then. Yeah, you a slave now. How you going to be ruled? This is what's running through their minds as to why. Okay, I'm making up some, you know, I'm exaggerating and imagining. This is what's running through his mind, their minds, that, that this wasn't going to be a great experience for Joseph. Their idea was to try to, remember, they wanted him dead originally until they figured out, well, we can probably get a little bit more if we decide to sell him. So they were not selling Joseph in order to uh, make, his, make his life greater. They were trying to better themselves while yet making Joseph's life a living, you fill in the blank. That was their idea. That was their idea. So now we move forward. We move along. We're now in Genesis 39. And I love this because, again, his brothers and sold him into slavery. He's there in slavery working for, for Pharaoh, for the king of Egypt at that time, working for that current uh, king. And, and this is what the scripture says in chapter 39, verses 2 to 4. Again, the slave. 
the slave. All right. The Lord was with Joseph. Hmm. That's about all I really need to read. We can go on and, and, and end it. Mm -hmm. The Lord was with Joseph. So in slavery, come on, y'all, let's keep it in perspective. In a time woo, when things don't seem to be going well, the Lord was with Joseph. Can we grab hold of that and say, the Lord is with me, even in my hard times, even in my tumultuous times, even in my times of not understanding, the Lord is with me. My God, my God, I'm encouraged by this. So again, we're talking about Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Okay, remember he's a, a Israelite slave in Egypt. They're not supposed to prosper in a situation like that. But the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Come on, in any circumstance, if the Lord is with us, we are able to overcome and we are able to prosper. Yeah, yeah, come on, speak that word. The Lord is with me. Oh, yes, he is with me. So the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his, of his Egyptian master. Verse three, when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. <laughs> I, that makes me giggle and gives me joy because what the brothers being used by the enemy what the enemy meant for harm, God was with Joseph nonetheless, turning it around for good. So even in what was meant for harm, God was with Joseph. Can we get a hold of that? Even what was meant. So again, they sold him into slavery thinking his life would be miserable. Yet God was with Joseph. He was able to find favor in the eyes of the king of Potiphar. So much so that Potiphar entrusted Joseph with all that he owned, he was head of house as a slave. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but that's just how God works things. God works things like that. He does things like that. Come on now. We, we can dive into these Old Testament stories because we can be encouraged by them. Yes. So again, he found favor with Potiphar and he was put in charge. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Now, Okay, yep, yeah, he was elevated. Joseph was elevated when, when again, this was supposed to be the most terrible experience for him. Of course, you know, that's what the brothers were looking forward to. We'll teach you. But God had another plan in mind. So he was elevated at the time. As we move on and mosey on through chapter 39, we find another challenge for Joseph, another attack against Joseph. Now, again, can we not relate that Sometimes our lives, we feel like we're up. Sometimes we, then we come in back down. It feels like it's just a little bit of a roller coaster, you know what I mean? And I, I hear some people testament to, man, it's always something, you know, it's always something. So even in Joseph's story, it's always something, you know, he was elevated. He was elevated to, to leadership under Potiphar in his house, but then just because you've been elevated, just because you're having good days, just because God is using you in a mighty way, just because God is showing you favor, doesn't mean that the enemy is going to say, cool, all right, I'm done with you. I'm moving on now. No, uh, the attacks are still going to come like it did right here with Joseph. So Joseph, again, we're still in chapter 39 of Genesis. He's in the house. He's in control of everything. He oversees everything. Now, here comes the king's wife talking about some, yeah, let's do this. I want to lay with you. Come on. Come on, young man. You, you, you hot. You this and that. Let's do this. Joseph like, nah, uh-uh. Your, your husband, the king, he has entrusted me with all of this. I am not touching you. What is wrong with you? No, I'm not doing that. She was relentless. So she didn't ask just once. She did it for days. Mm -hmm. she was, she did it for days. She kept trying to pursue Joseph, trying to get Joseph to sleep with her. And he held honor. He did what was right before God. 
<laughs> excuse me, before his leadership with Potiphar, he, he did the right thing. He stood his ground and turned Potiphar's wife down more than once. And she couldn't believe it. And she just was like, okay, all right, that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to read verses 10 and verses 14. So this is what it says. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, meaning she, she tried it day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. And then verse 14 says this. So this was after all the pursuing and he, she got turned down many a times. She called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. So the attack from the enemy using Potiphar's wife, she lied on the boy. She lied on the young man and made it as if he was trying to pursue her. And she was like, oh, no, I didn't want it. No. And, 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 and turned the whole thing around, lied on him. As a result of that lie, of Potiphar's wife's lie, he was demoted just like that. Potiphar believed his wife. Boom. Joseph was demoted to prison. <laughs> demoted to prison. Yeah. From the palace to the prison. That's what happened to Joseph. Like that. Like that. Now things can happen in our lives like that. Can we all agree that we have challenges that catch us off guard and catch us surprised really quick. Things are going really well. And then all of a sudden they're not. They're going really bad. They're going really bad. But let us be encouraged because guess what? Guess what? Even in that, after he was demoted from palace to prison, verse 21 says this. The Lord was with him. Hallelujah. Even in devotion from palace to prison, the Lord was with him. That's what the scripture says. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So even in prison, he had favor with the warden. Come on, because that's God. So even I want us to know this, like I said, Good times, bad times, God is with us. God is with us. He is never, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. I don't ever want us to be thinking that way, but I want us to know that he is with us always, always. So he had favor in the eyes of the prison warden. He was like the man in prison, you know, because God was with him. All right, so Joseph's in prison, all right? So he's in prison, but he's, he's running things, you know, still in prison because why? Somebody say it, God was with him. That's the only reason, because God was with him, even in his down. That was supposed to be down, but it was all right because God was with him. So he's in prison. Now we're moving into verse, uh, excuse me, not verse, but chapter 41, now, again, like I said, he's in prison. Joseph's still in prison at this time. And now Pharaoh is having dreams. Mm -hmm. Go figure, right? Doing something, having something that lies right within the wheelhouse of the guy that's in the prison, right? Pharaoh's having dreams. And our, uh, he's a little bit troubled because he don't know what they mean. But somebody knows a guy that can figure it out, that can help him out with that. So they bring Joseph in. What's up? What's with these dreams I'm having, young man? Can you tell me what's going on? Of course, Joseph did his thing. God, get them in that area. God, God he did it and told him about famines are coming. <laughs> you better get it right. You know, all of these things. And Pharaoh was impressed. He was, he was impressed. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, because Joseph used his gift... And, 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 and was obedient to God in that. This is what happened in verse 41. So Pharaoh, so this is a chapter 41, verse 41. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Back up again. Boom. Ups, downs, ups and downs. Don't that sound like life for real? The life that we go through even now, we got life, life, a life of ups and downs. But God is with us. God is with us and he's working this thing, y'all. Y'all y'all following me here because we're going somewhere. So he's working this thing. So now 
after Joseph successfully interprets the dreams of Pharaoh, Pharaoh promotes him, not just over a house, but we're talking about the land of Egypt. And we're talking about an Israelite. <laughs> My goodness, God is all in this thing. He is working this thing, all right? So here we go. Now he's in charge, like I said, of Egypt, per Pharaoh's instruction. That's what's going on. We're moving into Genesis chapter 42 now. And we're talking about the rise of Joseph, basically, for the most part. So here it is. It says this in uh, Genesis chapter 42, verses 6 through 8. Now, Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. This was Joseph's role. He was the governor supposed to be enslaved according to his brothers brothers thought that he was suffering joseph is the governor all right <laughs> of the land the person who sold grain to all his people so when joseph's brothers arrived okay let me let me back up a little bit so part of the dream that pharaoh was having is that his famine was supposed to be coming and so here we are we're getting into this that this part of it and um jacob who is joseph's dad sent the brothers to go find some food in the land of Egypt. So Joseph's brothers, the ones who sold him into slavery, headed to Egypt to find food. That's, this is what this is, this is what this is about now. They went, they left their homeland, traveled to Egypt to find food. Okay, so here we are. Now Joseph's the governor and he's the one that sells the grain so sells the food to all the people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, remember, because they're coming, they were on their way to find food. Joseph's brothers arrived. They bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Okay. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. They didn't recognize him though. And he says, where do you come from? He asked. And they said, from the land of Canaan. They replied to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. <laughs> so you got to think about this. So it's because many years have elapsed since they seen their brother that they had to pretend was dead, that they knew that they sold to slavery. They might have thought he might have died by now. Who knows? You know, however, he rec Joseph recognized them right away. Yet they didn't recognize him. I'm having trouble hearing. And um, okay, Siri and I watch. Goodness, I never had to have him. All right. Um, so they didn't recognize him, but he recognized them. And so he pretended just to be, you know, the one of the Egyptians that's out there selling or, you know, selling, selling, selling the grain. Didn't do nothing different with him. But remember, the key point here that Joseph's in, the, in power now and he has the power to sell them food or not or give them food or whatever. All of that good stuff. So the brothers are there in town. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, <clears throat> at this point, they didn't recognize Joseph, right? <sighs> Fast forward a few more chapters. They did. They recognized who Joseph was finally. Like, oh my God, is you a bro? You actually still alive? And you actually in charge over here? What? Can you imagine? What? How did that happen? So we're in Genesis 45 now, chapter uh, Genesis 45, verse six. And it says, this is what Joseph said to them. So, cause they were all like, oh my God, Lord, no, oh no. They, they were really, you know, repenting. They felt bad <laughs> at that point. Joseph turns and says to them, and now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Whoa, I'm going to read that one more time. So again, this is during the time where the brothers recognized who Joseph was. Joseph was their very brother that they sold many, many years ago into slavery. He's still there, still alive, doing well. And they are like, oh my gosh. Oh, whoo. They, they were feeling some type of way. And Joseph said to them, Joseph, the one sold into slavery, the one they wanted to kill, the one that they wanted to suffer because of his gifting that God bestowed upon him. Joseph turned and said to his brothers, and now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. I, I, I'm glad about it because Joseph 
throughout all of his many ups and downs over the years, through these chapters that we've read, he understands. He understands that the purposes of God are being fulfilled throughout all of the struggle, throughout all of the rejection that I may have experienced by you guys, through, through the hate and the, and, 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 the, and the disdain that you guys had for me, that you had enough gall to sell me here. But I understand, hallelujah, that it was God that orchestrated that thing and sent me ahead of you here to save lives. My God, my God, how many of us can be that responsible to God? How many of us can be that responsive to God to know when it's God moving, even in our struggle, even in our trouble, even in our challenges, even in our unfavorable situations? How many of us can stand like Joseph did and say, don't worry about it. It was God that did that thing. <coughs> How many of us can do it? That it was God that allowed that trouble in my life to bring me to the point to where I am right now. This thing is bigger than me. This thing is not just about me. This thing is about the lives that I have to touch. Hallelujah. So don't worry about it. He didn't even hold an alt against his brothers for that. He didn't even care. He just brushed it off because I know that it was God that sent me ahead of you. Huh. That's powerful to me. That he can have enough sense to know. Remember in the beginning. I said it's a lot. It's, 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 a lot of times it's in the, in the hindsight. When we turn around and look back. And we see. Yeah. This is what this was about. I'm here because. I, God saw the famine coming. God knew the famine was coming. He needed somebody here in position. To be able to save y'all and my own family. So God orchestrated y'all being simple enough to sell me off into this area. That I may be promoted into a position to be able to save y'all. Ha! <laughs> Who's seen all that coming? Not them. Not even Joseph. But God's seen it. His purpose. <clears throat> his purpose. Not our own. I'm pretty sure Joseph, that was not his plan to be sold into slavery. That wasn't what he was after. I'm pretty sure, but now he sees how God has used all of it or is still using all of it for his glory, for his purposes. Yeah, we got to get on that level. We got to get on that level. We got to get on that level. So moving on to Genesis chapter 46 here. Again, we're, we're coming off the part where the brothers recognize each other. Joseph's like, it's all good. God is in this thing. God is moving. God is doing his thing. That's where we at. Now it's time for dad to show up. Now it's time for dad to show up. So in Genesis chapter 46, verse three, God says this to Jacob, Joseph's father, the father of all of the brothers that sold Joseph, this is what God said to him. I am God, the, uh, excuse me. I am God, the God of your father. He said, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt for I will make you into a great nation there. My goodness, my goodness. Talking about God's will and his plan going forth. Did you hear what he told? Did you hear what he told, uh, uh Jacob? He told Jacob not to be afraid to go down to Egypt now because he's going to make a great nation there. My goodness. This is when he was contemplating going. And so now we move on to verse uh, chapter 47, verse 27, where he says, where it says, now the Israelites settled in Egypt. <laughs> the Israelites settled in Egypt. So th this is after Jacob went and all of his descendants came with him. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. Again, that's Genesis chapter 47, verse 27. So uh, Jacob did, as God told him to do, go on down to Egypt. And when he did, he brought his descendants with him, his family, his peoples. 
It was, it was a, a lot of them. They all went down there. When they got there to the region, they settled. They acquired property. They began to live. <clears throat> they began to live. And they were fruitful. And they increased greatly in number. And again, we're talking about God's purposes being fulfilled here, y'all. God's plan is activated and always is activated, even though we don't necessarily understand it. God's will, his plan is activated. Because when you think about it, let, let us not forget what God said to Abraham. That's not, <laughs> let's not forget what God said to Abraham back earlier in Genesis, Abraham being the grandfather of Jacob, he told Abraham then, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. You will now be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. That was in Genesis 17. Verses four through six. So God's plan is activated and is continuously, always, perpetually going forth, even when we don't understand how it all is happening. So God, my goodness, whoa, my brain can't take it. So God used this whole thing. Joseph being hated on by his brothers because of the gift that God gave him to sell him into slavery, which happens to be another area of the region of the world that will grow based off of what God said back in Genesis 17, where he made the promise to Abraham that his descendants, he will make nations of many and that kings will come from his lineage. He made that promise then and it is in action now, even through this situation. You see that because they settled there, they prospered, they grew in numbers is what the scripture tells us in the area of Goshen based off of what was said back in Genesis 17 to Abraham. It's in motion. So I don't want us ever to think that these things that we go through, these things that we don't understand, these things that we don't necessarily like, it's all part of God's plan in motion. God has a bigger picture. God has a bigger thing going than what our finite minds can ever understand. I, I, I thought of as I was studying this, I was thinking of the um, the movie uh, 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 um, Training Day when 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 uh, Denzel Washington was was training um, Hoyt. That was his character name. And he was telling him, look, it, this ain't uh, checkers, it's chess. You know what I'm saying? And God is very thoughtful. God has a plan in place. It ain't checkers, it's chess. God got his pieces all over to where he is making his plan, his will go forth. Whether we understand it or not, does not take away from the fact that his plan is in motion. It's not about the short game for God. It is about the long game for God. We are just part of his plan and we have to be willing and we have to be able to succumb. We have to be able and willing to yield to his plan, his grand plan, not our little daily plans that we have, that we feel that he may be interrupting with some of the trials and the tribulations that we may be experiencing. God is in control. He has all of it part of his plan in order to bring glory to the whole situation. Are we willing to succumb? Are we willing to yield to whatever it is that God says is to be? If it takes for us to go to the prison, if it takes for us to be sold into slavery like our boy Joseph, would we be willing? Would we be willing to say, God, I, I, I'm not mad at who hated on me. I'm not mad at who was jealous of me. I'm not mad at whoever had ill will of me because I know it was you that orchestrated that thing. Can we be that strong 
uh, of a follower of God to be able to say those very words. We have to have an understanding that God, <laughs> excuse me, God is in everything. He is in everything. I'm reminded of Romans 8:28, where the scripture tells us that, and we know, we have to know that, we know that, we know that, we know. I don't care what it is. I don't care where we came from. I don't care what we're going through now. We have to know that all things, all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to whose purpose? His purpose, not called to our own personal purposes, but to his purpose. His purpose will prevail. I don't care how we got started. I don't care where we are right now. It's about how we finish. And are we going to finish in the will of God? Are we going to finish in the purposes of God? That is my goal. That is what I want for myself. So there is purpose, y'all, in our pain. There is purpose in our ups. There is purpose in our downs. There are purpose in our good days. There's purpose in our bad days. But in all of it, we must trust that God is with us. Just like Joseph, when he was in the palace, God was with him. When he was in the prison, God was with him. When he was uh, uh, in Potiphar's uh I said that when he's in the palace. But when he was uh, um, over Egypt, God was with him. God is with us. No matter what we are going through, no matter what we're going through. And I want to end with this scripture that I hope that this encourages us is Philippians verse, whew, Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven, where it says, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Cause sometimes we be going through some things that has us feeling anxious. It has us feeling a little bit unsure about what the end is going to be. Oh, Holy Spirit, hallelujah. But you know what the end is going to be. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that no, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know the one who does know. And that's all I need to know. Praise God is the one who does know and I hold on to him. So a lot of times we're going through things and we're unsure, we're uncertain, and we become a little bit anxious about the thing. We got to make sure that we take our petitions before God. And what happens? The peace, verse 7, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Because let me say this, because I know a few times within this, I said sometimes we got to understand it's nice to understand. That's a, that's a bonus if we can understand what God is doing. But plenty of times, we ain't going to understand. We ain't going to understand it while we're in it. We may understand it by and by, like the old hymn says. That's, again, in hindsight. And when we look back on it, then we understand. But as we're going through it, we may not <coughs> understand it. But that's all right. We don't have to understand it. Again, we just need to know the one who knows. And when we do that, it's his peace that does what? transcends that passes understanding so so long as i have his peace i ain't got to understand a thing come on holy spirit i don't have to understand a thing so long as his peace is upon me so long as his peace is with me the understanding is ir irrelevant because his peace is what keeps me praise god so that is what we need the peace that passes all understanding while we are striving to, to be part of his purpose and his will and not our own and not our own. My God, my God, I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you. If it has, make sure, make sure, make sure that you share the message. It's so important to share the message because you sharing it is like being obedient to the scripture that says, go ye therefore. Yeah, and spread the gospel. You are doing just that by sharing. So please go ahead and share the message. If you're watching this on replay, that don't um that don't you know exempt you. Go on and share it as well. Yes, share the message. And again, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. God bless you. I pray that um you know look go through the book of Genesis. You know those chapters. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. That story about Joseph. I mean, it just really encouraged me uh, to 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 do be better at <laughs> understanding or, or knowing that God's purpose prevails, you know, whether I understand the little intricate pieces because I won't all the time, but God knows it. God understands it. And, and that's all I need to know. That is all I need 
to know. Amen. All right. God bless you all. You have a wonderful night. You take care. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and know that it's God's purpose that prevails, not our own. Talk to you later. Love you guys. Bye.